this is Calimara here, and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. Today, we are going to be talking about and designing something for a series that is very near and dear to my heart. Adventure Time. And yes, I know Fiona and Cake is technically its own series now, but I have not seen it yet. And it's still connected to the original Adventure Time show, so please don't spoil me. I've been wanting to talk about Adventure Time for a while because it was such a huge influence on my art and writing. I adored all the characters so much and I wanted an excuse to talk about this show that was such a big component of my childhood. And I think the Fiona and Cake episodes in particular had a very special place in the memories of everyone that watched Adventure Time. But speaking of cake and sweet treats, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. My family and I always look forward to when these box get delivered to us every month because they're always full of delicious, super unique, and high quality snacks that we wouldn't be able to try unless we lived in Japan. With Tokyo Treat, you will get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan. And with Sakurako, each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware that will be supporting local Japanese snack makers. There's a new theme every month, so you're always getting something new and exciting. Everything inside is so adorable and I feel so lucky to have been able to try them because, again, these are all available only in Japan for a limited time. These boxes come with a booklet that explains every snack included in the box, including any allergen information in case you have any dietary restrictions. You can also learn about Japanese culture. If you're interested in getting your own boxes or as a gift for friends and family, check out the links in my description. Check out their website for the latest updates. In this video, I will be drawing Fiona in an alternate timeline because I hear that the Fiona and Cake series explores alternate realities where she is a princess in the land of Ah. So I'll be designing her a bespoke dress and sword and I'll be talking about what kind of kingdom she'd have. Okay, I admit, I just wanted an excuse to draw in Adventure Time's art style again and draw Fiona in a pretty dress. And speaking of said dress, I wanted Fiona's princess dress to be a reference to her iconic blue outfit while still looking pretty and royal. I decided I would turn her rabbit hat into a crown, which let me draw her luscious golden hair down. I think the hairstyle I gave her, which has parts of her hair tied back in a ponytail, kind of made her look like Star Butterfly a little bit. And now I'm wondering if Fiona and Star got in a fight, who would come out on top? Personally, my money is on Fiona, because if she's anything like Finn, she's way more durable than Star, has faster reflexes, and is agile enough to dodge any of Star's magic blasts. She'd be able to get in close range really fast and just knock Star's lights out. Plus, I think that Fiona has way more battle experience fighting way more powerful enemies. But let me know what you think. This is exactly why though it was so important to me that her dress is practical to move in, because Fiona is an adventurer and she never backs down from a fight. I took inspiration from 2B's dress in Near Automata, which I think had the right balance of comfort, practicality, and style. I also incorporated a lot of ribbons and flowers into the dress as a reference to the dress she wore in the original Fiona and Cake episode and Natasha Allegri, who was one of the artists on Adventure Time and the creator of Fiona and Cake, because she would always incorporate a lot of flowing ribbons and flowers in her art, especially when she drew Fiona. If that name sounds familiar to you, that's because Natasha also went on to create her own show, Bee and Puppycat, another show I'm obsessed with. Natasha is such a major inspiration of mine growing up, and I was obsessed with her drawings of the Adventure Time characters. You could always tell when Natasha had worked on an episode because everyone will look especially slay. I really liked the flower motif I chose for Fiona and so I decided to implement it further into her design because I feel that it reflects her outdoorsy and adventurous personality while also still being beautiful and femme. That's really one of the things I loved about Fiona, because while she's a tough tomboy who loves getting down and dirty, she still likes pretty and girly things too and doesn't look down on them. It's that dichotomy of rough and tumble and pretty and girly that I think really drew people to Fiona. And of course, her episode also came with a lot of pretty boys, so naturally it was going to be popular. 
I drew the chest ruffle to resemble a blossom and incorporated a leaf motif to her sword. I would later turn the hearts on the sword into blossoms of a similar shape to her chest ruffle as well. I wanted this blossom sword to parallel Finn's grass sword, so I ended up adding wrappings around her wrist and going up her legs as a reference to this as well. For the color scheme, I planned out a similar palette to Fiona and Finn's iconic blue outfit, using sky blue as the primary color with navy blue for the ribbon accents. I also added white safety shorts underneath that I think tied in well with the chest ruffle and bunny crown. I ended up doing a stripe pattern with the green grass wrapping up her legs and wrist as a reference to Finn and Fiona's backpacks in the show. I also decided to color the gem on her crown navy blue as a reference to the blue comet. And during the finishing touches, I'll also add sparkles to Fiona's dress with some shooting star patterns as a reference to this as well. If any of you watching this are artists, I highly recommend drawing in Adventure Time style if you're interested in improving your poses and gestures. Because Adventure Time style is so simple and doesn't really follow the rules of anatomy, you can pretty much draw however you want. And this lets you experiment with dynamic movements or angles without worrying too much about anatomical accuracy and proportions. And I find this extremely liberating. I think this art style is great for getting over art blocks and also lets you focus more on gesture and shape. So in case you guys didn't grow up with Adventure Time or aren't that familiar with it and just have this video on in the background while you're drawing, let me give you some context on the lore of the show to make this design story make more sense. I'd put a spoiler warning for the plot of Adventure Time, but the show ended in 2018. That was five years ago, can you believe it? Anyway, the main setting of Adventure Time is called the Land of U, which is actually a post-nuclear apocalypse Earth, roughly a thousand years in the future, where humans have nearly been completely wiped out, and all the strange creatures in the Land of U are a result of severe genetic mutations from the nuclear bomb that created the large crater on the planet in the first place. Oh, and magic is also a thing that exists, as well as supernatural creatures like demons and vampires and ancient gods. Pretty much everything goes, and I think part of what made Adventure Time so special was the way it presented itself as a silly, simple, fantastical setting, which actually turned out to have very dark origins and proceeded to explore some very deep and mature topics. Even from the first season, Adventure Time had always included an element of darkness and horror that contrasted the bright, happy world starkly. And while it's entirely possible that all of the dark lore was added retroactively, most people would agree that it was a very welcome addition. Also, part of the reason I loved Adventure Time so much was because it balanced those dark topics and discussed them in a way that was natural and nonchalant. That might fly over most kids' heads, but a lot of adults would understand. Despite the bright, happy colors and the energetic movements and fun language of the characters, there's always this persisting sense of melancholy to the show that you don't really appreciate until you go back and watch everything again. And this is coming from someone who, after watching the series finale, was like, Yep, I'm never watching this again. <laughs> I, it just felt like such a good ending that, well, this was the end of an era for me. And I think that sense of melancholy still stuck with me, even to this day. Because these characters are subjected to a lot of very awful and heavy things in the show. They experience grief and mourning and very complex topics that kind of has you grappling with the meaning of life and existence, but never really hits you over the head with it. And yet they remain somehow the same people. Forever changed, grown up, but still the same person. Plus, I also just really liked seeing what stylish outfits and hairstyles that the major female characters like Marceline, Princess Bubblegum, and Flame Princess were wearing in that particular episode. And now here we are today. However, Fiona and Cake 
actually come from the land of Ah, not the land of U. So why are we talking about U? Well, as I've mentioned before, Fiona and Cake as a concept, that is, Adventure Time but gender-bent, was the creation of one of Adventure Time's character designers and storyboard artists, Natasha Allegri. In the show, Fiona and Cake are Ice King's original characters, and The Land of Awe is the setting for his fanfiction of Fiona and Cake. However, there have been episodes in the show that indicate Fiona and Cake are more than just the Ice King's imagination, and the new spin-off show Fiona and Cake, which introduces the concept of a multiverse into Adventure Time, pretty much confirms this. But since I haven't seen Fiona and Cake yet, I'm going off of Adventure Time's concept of Fiona and Cake and the lore of its world. So in the land of Ooh, the land has been divided into many different kingdoms. Some popular ones you might be familiar with are the Candy Kingdom, the Fire Kingdom, the Ice Kingdom, the Slime Kingdom, and interdimensional domains off of Earth like Lumpy Space, the Crystal Dimension, and the Nidosphere. Each of these kingdoms sprung up after the nuclear apocalypse and are usually ruled by a princess or a king. So back in the height of the Adventure Time fandom, there were a lot of fans that came up with their own kingdoms and their own unique themes slash elements and OCs to rule said kingdoms. It was a lot of fun and I was definitely guilty of doing this myself. So in this alternate reality, I'd like to imagine Fiona as the princess of her own kingdom. Given that Fiona is one of the last surviving humans left in the world, I think it would be cool if she was the princess of the surviving humans on the islands, which was where the survivors of the Mushroom War, that apocalyptic event I mentioned before, had gone to protect themselves from the mutants and magical beings. Lore-wise, this wouldn't be much of a stretch since in Finn's version of reality, his mother, Minerva, had pretty much taken up the role of ruler for the humans, technically making her a queen and Finn a prince. And since we're doing this as though Fiona is just gender-bent Finn, the same situation would apply to her. For some context, in the Islands miniseries, We learn that the humans have basically fortified themselves on that island because they believe that the rest of the world is not safe for them to live in, which in all fairness, is kind of true. But people are also not allowed to leave the island to see that for themselves, and nothing is allowed to enter. This is enforced by the guardians they built to protect themselves and the security forces that keep people from leaving. By the end of the island's miniseries, Finn manages to convince Minerva that the world isn't such a bad place and that it isn't inhabitable like Minerva thinks it is. This led her to finally deactivating the Guardians and making it possible for people to leave the island if they so wished. Now, my alternate reality for Princess Fiona would pick up right where the island's miniseries leaves off, where the humans on the island would anoint Fiona as their new leader, and Fiona leads the first group of humans back to the land of U. I think the island would still serve as their home domain, so the group of humans that return to the land of U would follow in their princess's footsteps and become helpers slash adventurers too. They wouldn't build a new permanent settlement or kingdom in the land of U because they still have the islands, but instead become a nomadic group of travelers that provide help where they're needed, and with the help of the other monarchs like Prince Gumball, they would build camps across the land to aid their journey and communicate with each other like an adventurer's guild. Perhaps they'd even set up those guilds in different kingdoms, allowing them safe passage and a place to stay in their journey, and for people who need their help to contact them directly. The people of the human kingdom would learn to tame their own animal companions or form partnerships with powerful creatures, or maybe build their own considering how advanced human tech had gotten, to accompany them in their journey like Fiona does with Cake. I think their kingdom would come to be known in the land of U as the Adventurer Kingdom, which makes Fiona's title Adventurer Princess. So yeah, let me know what you think of my ideas and design in the comments below. 
I really want to redesign some of the other non-humanoid princesses from Adventure Time like Raggedy Princess and Lumpy Space Princess with a more humanoid form because I think it would be cute and fun and I love drawing in this style so much. I think it'll be great practice as well to experiment with the concepts and there's a lot of cute things you could do with the themes if you put it on a humanoid character. For example, this was Natasha Allegri's original concept for Cotton Candy Princess, and this is what we ended up getting. No shade, I think it fits in just fine with how characters in Adventure Time tend to look, but imagine if we'd gotten Natasha's design. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the pond for a while. I know this video was kind of a short one, but I just needed to talk about Adventure Time somehow, okay? I hope your skin didn't get too pruny. Big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content, join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art or chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want more of my stories, check out my Wild Wars series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!